Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox and Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. In this video I'm testing out the abort system for the Shuttle Mark II. This should be fairly quick. We've got three tests to work on. Uh, first is the surface test, the next is the in-launch, in-flight test, and then the third is seeing that they can decouple off properly because these, uh, these are decouplers here. Oh, not that. This is an abort system decoupler that separates off the SRBs once they are no longer useful. So while once the second stage is lit, we can just get rid of them. So in lieu of a really awkward tower trying to be placed on top of the pod, uh, because as a space plane, that would look weird, uh, we just have these on the side. Also, uh, the decouplers carry with them some real shoot parachutes. Uh, so those are the parachutes that will help us on the way down. And of course, they are discarded along with the decouplers uh, in the case that we don't need the abort system. So, uh, and again, the forward portion of the cabin separates with this separator here. That's the decoupler. And yeah, so the question is whether it'll work. The SRBs are real SRBs. They are the S310 SRBs. They're on, I think, the Lambda 4S system from Japan. Basically, they are little SRBs that are strapped around a bigger SRB on the first stage of that system and help it to get a boost off the ground initially and then that's it. So they only last a few seconds which is an important quality for an abort system SRB after all. Uh, we don't want an SRB that lasts 60 seconds that's not going to be very useful in this situation. We want a small bit of very quick power. Oh, and we also need to test whether everything can get to orbit properly after we are carrying this extra load of SRBs, right? We've got uh, some solid fuel here. I didn't, I don't know what exactly they pack into the S310 SRBs, unfortunately. So uh, I just got the thrust. I've got the correct amount of fuel, uh, a correct mass and burn time. So that's what I'm going with. So anyway, pad abort test. So here we go and abort. Okay. So there we go. We have a pad abort and I'm going to arm the parachutes. And they have deployed. Okay, and we do want to land uh, flat side down. We don't want to be landing nose side down because if it was nose side down then that might damage the RCS tanks in the nose and that could cause all sorts of problems so we do want flat side down. In theory there should be a hatch here for them to uh, get into the cargo bay and everything but or an airlock in the cargo bay something like that but we do not have that. There would be a uh, gap in the decoupler plate as well. Anyway, we seem to have 6.4 meters per second. Let's just make sure nothing really weird happens as we touch the ground. Uh, sort of on the edge of the pad though. Oh. Oh right, because Katniss Cape Canaveral, okay, Katniss Cape Canaveral has that problem. Okay, uh, so I've been wondering about why we keep having splashdowns, but that's because I've got this fancy texture here and that is only possible if there is no collider. So we end up splashing down. Uh, well, in this case, that's fine. Okay, <laughs> all right, uh, let's just revert. I'm using the New Glenn rocket because it's the smallest rocket that this system is meant for if the system is fully fueled. Oh, speaking of which, let me just make totally sure that we are fully fueled. Open, we've got some locked tanks and we've got the Mars, uh, sorry, moon transfer tanks there. Okay. Wasn't supposed to clip the wings by opening the bay, but anyway, we have the bay and the tanks in the bay. So, yep. And uh, unfortunately, the New Glenn cannot launch this to orbit while retaining the fuel for the first stage. I think we tested that out. So, maybe we need uh, Raptor 9 slash Unix rocket, though. Again, with an expendable second stage as originally designed. So we might need that. And then that first stage should be able to land safe, maybe? It depends. We'll have to see. That'll be another test. Not this time. I think we're sort of oriented 
upside down from the way I really want to go, but it'll, it'll be fine for the test that we're trying to do. We should be the other way around. Okay, anyway, ignition. And launch. So a little bit heavier than the last time I tested it, but first thing we're gonna do is just try to abort close to the end of the first stage. Oh, maybe we'll do a roll program. There we go. All better. Okay, and abort. All right, we were going 4Gs with the rocket. It's still going 4Gs. All right, and I've armed the parachutes. We're actually going way into space. I overshot by quite a lot to give the upper stage some time to burn. In theory, that's what we'll do. Probably not this far up, though. But yeah, we're we're going pretty high up, so the question is whether we're actually going to burn up or not. I don't know. Uh, it might be hot. It might be hot. It does have heat tiles on the bottom here, but it does depend on how we orient, doesn't it? I wonder if we can sort of orient ourselves ahead of time. Hmm. Um, so uh, let's activate the RCS. This will sort of do. I guess a little bit of pitch would probably be good. Sort of pretend we're a little mini shuttle. I don't know what kind of aerodynamics this actually has, so... Your guess is as good as mine. I haven't tried to bring just this part back through the atmosphere. Where the heck is the center of lift anyway? I feel like the one thing we really don't want to do is be nose down. It's maxing out pitch now. Uh, okay. I think it's gonna go this side down. I guess we'll have to plan to... I don't know, we'll see what kind of heat it develops. Well, most of... Uh, this kind of abort will always involve really high g-forces, so that's no big surprise. Eh, that didn't seem too bad, actually. Heat-wise, I mean. Heat-wise, it was not too bad. Unlike the Starship, uh, not the Starship, the Lex pod, you know, the front end of Lex that we were trying to uh, have abort in a previous video. This has some intrinsic aerodynamics to it, and so the shape of it made it a little bit more stable during the abort than, if you remember, the Lex pod, it was just spinning around like crazy. For the Lex pod, we'll probably have to add some fins or something. Okay, splash down. And we're floating. All right. Let's uh, start over again, revert, and this time we'll do a nominal mission. Okay, throttle up, SAS is on, ignition. And launch. We'll go ahead for a roll program as well. Now really, I don't see any need to actually be going 4Gs during launch, and we'll probably throttle back soon. I think uh, that's probably good. Yeah, 4Gs was just a test board system. We can easily throttle back to avoid that much thrust. Nope, oh, those decouplers aren't where I thought I had put them. I guess we're sort of doing about the same as we did on the abort test. Okay, separation and ignition.
the game throttle up. Okay, so I need to grab the decouplers for the SRBs and we are gonna test whether those can go off safely. Let's take a good look. Ooh, a little bit close. I might have to put a little bit more force. Yeah, at least our wings weren't extended yet. Okay, but we got rid of them. Let's see if we can make orbit properly. Uh, should be able to with margin, but this stage needs some, some time. Seven minutes is not too bad. I've seen worse. I'm gonna make extra sure it's not counting. Uh oh! Oh no, okay. I was worried that we were lacking one of the tanks. <laughs> uh, it was just that it disappears when we're inside of it, that's all. Okay, just making sure it's not counting that bit or any additional fuel in here. Okay. We can go ahead and roll. And wing extension. Not that we need the wings yet, but well, we need the wings to be extended so that the cargo bay can open when we, whenever we want to open the cargo bay. So yeah, the aborts, making the abort system was actually a lot more difficult than you might think it is. It's, uh, it's easy if you just use like the stock parts and have a decoupler and then just sort of try and tape some uh, SRBs to it. You know, just slap them on. Uh, you have to make sure the thrust is lined up with the center of mass just right, but other than that, um, it's quick. When trying to model the parts though, you have to make sure that the attachment nodes are all in exactly the right place and the right orientation because everything is sort of slightly rotated, right? This isn't a flat surface here by any means, and so the, the model of the decoupler has to be curved, and then the SRBs, if you notice, were sort of tilted with respect to each other. It's and then the thrust lines for the SRBs are at an angle, uh, so a lot is going on with that. <laughs> so uh, it took more work to get that abort system done than you might think. It doesn't seem to have hurt our ability to make orbit very much. Again, uh, fairly light compared to a huge tower and that cone that goes over the capsules and everything. Okay, that is an orbit. We've got a lot left over. I really should investigate whether we can maybe save the first stage a little bit. Okay, and so just checking that everything else works out. RCS. Prograde. Um, I think that oh, we didn't activate this RCS. There we go. Okay, so it's ready to go. If we open up the bay we can unlock these. The hydrogen and oxygen here are fuel cell fuel that we want to retain, but um, those are the Hydrolox engines. So we've got 3,084 meters per second to transfer to the moon. And that is just a little bit less than I'd like, but we'd probably finish up with the... Eh, the, the fuel issues with this I'm still working on. I might change to methane oxygen stuff. I think that I mentioned that. And I might try some other things anyway, but that's not going to affect anything to do with the test that I was working on here. The abort system test seems to work just fine. So with that, I'll say thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.